Rory collected data from a random sample of 164 workers and recorded the number of days each works for home for one week after the lockdown. These data are shown in the table below. The number of days, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the frequencies. A. Represent the data by a suitable diagram. B. Calculate the mean number of days work from home and the standard deviation of the number of days work from home. This part we'll look a bit later in the uh, question. So here's a table. So the most suitable thing is to draw a bar chart. So here we have the bar chart. The heights of the bars must match up to the frequencies. As it's a bar chart, they should not be joined together because the data is discrete. Okay, part B, we are asked to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Just one last thing as well. Make sure that you've labeled your axis on your bar chart. So if you, we use the Casio calculator. So in the statistics mode, if you put in this one, the number of days, and this two, the frequency. And then if you press calc, then this will come out. You've got one variable, two variable, R, E, G, and then set. Now, before you press one variable, you need to press set and make sure that the one variable X list is set to list one. And the one variable frequency list is set to list two because this represents X and this represents the frequencies. And then press one variable once you've done that, exit that and press to one variable and you'll get the statistics that you want. Now in an exam, you probably are just asked to write down the mean and the standard deviation. Now this is the one here, 1.286 is the one that we use for MEI OCR. If you're on a different board, you probably use this one up here. Now, uh, just for the sake of being a bit more mathematical, the mean is the sum of f x, x f over f of uh, sigma f. And so you can get that these figures from the calculators. Um, sigma x f is 261 divided by n, which is sigma f, 164. On the calculator, that gives you 1.591 dot 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 round it off to two significant figures. Like I said, though, in the exam, if you write that, you'll get you one mark. For standard deviation, the formula is this. In some questions, you do actually have to use this, but not uh, here. We can get sigma fx squared, which is 685, minus 164, the sum of the frequencies times the mean squared, 1.59 squared, not rounded off, though, over 164 minus 1. And again, as I said, in the OCR MEI, we use this one. So it's 1.286, which will give you 1.292 two decimal places. Okay, but in the actual exam, if you write that and that, you will probably get it marked right and get you one mark. We now uh, get the next part of the question. Rory collected data from a different sample, 164 workers for the same week. The mean number of days worked from home for this sample was 1.84 and the standard deviation 1.52. Explain whether there's any evidence to suggest that one or both of the samples are flawed. There is actually no evidence uh, to suggest that one or both uh, samples are flawed as uh, different uh, sam uh, random samples can lead to different uh, results. Okay, the last part here, the community frequency di diagram for the ages of the workers in the first sample who worked at home for at least one day is shown on the right. Rory concludes that approximately 12% of the workers in this sample who worked from home on at least one day were over 60 years of age. Explain whether Rory's conclusion is correct. So it's going to require us to do a calculation. So we need to find 60 here, draw a line up to the to the graph, community frequency graph, go across and then read off the scale here. Each one of these little squares is worth four. So that we're going to say that's going to be 144. But we want the top, uh, this top here, we want to know this is 12%. So there's 164 minus 144 altogether. So 164 minus 144 is 120, so there's 20 at the top here. Okay, so the percentage will be 20 over 164 times 100, which gives me 12.2%. That's roughly the same as 12%. So our conclusion will be that Rory's conclusion is a 
approximately uh, correct. Okay, so when it says explain, we want some sort of mathematical reasoning and then we want the final conclusion. Okay, so this has been a video to show you how to get uh, use bar charts, your find the mean and standard deviation from your GDC and use a community frequency uh, chart. In the notes of this video, I will put the links to my webpage where you'll find thousands of videos to help you with A-level maths. And uh, I thank you very much for watching and ask you maybe you could consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.